In the next few slides, we are going to review the basic concepts of object-oriented programming in Java using dice throwing as an example. More specifically, we want to write a program to simulate a dice which is being thrown for 10 times and each time resulting in different values randomly. The first way to is to follow the usual procedural way of writing a Java program which we have learned so far. As you have learned, the random number generator that one can use in Java includes the random method in math class, which is math.random. You can find out about this method from the java.land.math class library. So math.random will return a double real number value between 0 and 1. Dice has only integer outcomes of 1 to 6, so using the return value of math.random directly does not work. It takes another two steps to get exactly what we want. First, we need to get an outcome that is between 0, 0.0 and 6.0. Next, we need to turn the real number into integer number in Java. We use casting to achieve this. That's why we use int math.random times 6 plus 1 in the statement. Next, the uh, traditional procedural programming approach will adopt something like a loop that will repeat for 10 times as you have learned, this will be something like the following. Is there any disadvantage of this approach? Firstly, you need to know how math.random method works. This is not really that serious because you can look up from Java class library. But the math more serious disadvantage is that variables declared may be together with other variables in the program. As a result, one cannot tell which parts of the codes pertain to the dice and their behaviors and which parts do not. Object-oriented programming is a way of structuring the codes so that you know which codes correspond to a dice and its behaviors and which ones pertain to other program logic. Now, this is a rewritten code of slide 1 according to object-oriented approach. Just from the code itself, we can understand the meaning of it more directly. Firstly, it is the typical structure of the main method, public, static, void, main, with the parameter, string, open bracket, uh, close bracket, arcs. Then we see there is a statement which says something like a dice object D has been created by using a method new dice. Then there is the looping structure here which is to be repeated for 10 times. Then next the code says the dice object D that was created is being rolled by using the method D dot row. Next, the system will output the dice value by calling a method d.getValued. Can you see the codes more clearly now? So there are some facts we can observe about the object-oriented approach. First, it models after a real dice. Second, the new method creates a dice. Third, the rolled method simulates rolling a dice. Fourthly, the get value method gets the face value of the dice. So essentially, dice is an example of a class. A class is a template you can use to mold an object. Next, one can instantiate an object D of class dice by calling new method on the class dice. Thus D is an object of the real dice. So another call of the new method will create another dice object D1 and rolled in D dot method is a behavior 
that simulate the rolling of a dice. In sum, object-oriented programming is a programming approach having the following characteristics. First, it models after real-life situations. Second, it puts all related variables and methods together. This is called abstraction. And thirdly, it hides all details and expose only through method call. This is called encapsulation. So in object-oriented programming, we distinguish between class and objects. A class is a structure where we define all related variables belonging to an entity. A class contains all related methods that process the variables. A class is only a template, the actual objects not created yet. On the other hand, an object or an instance is an actual entity. Namely, object is equal to identity plus instance variables plus methods. So the basic structure of a class can be demonstrated by the following diagram. Let's take the dice class as an example. First, the top layer contains attributes, properties, characteristics, and descriptions. In the case of a dice, it is value, which is the face value of the dice. Second, the bottom layer contains capabilities, services, behavior, functions, and operations. In the case of dice, it has roll and get value. Similarly, if you have a class called student, then you will have typical attributes such as ID of a student, name of a student, and marks. It will also have typical services such as display student particular and operations of assigning grade to students. Yet another example is a cash card. A cash card would typically has the ID of the class and the value, which is the amount of money stored in the cash card. Also, one performs operations such as deduct and top up on a cash card. So typically when one defines a class, the various parts of the class can be written in the following order. First, a class is declared using statement public class, the name of the class which is cash card, for example. Then it is the instance variables. Then the constructor of the class. Then the accessor methods of the class. Then the other methods associated with the class. Now let's take the cash card class as example to see how the various parts of the class can be written. First, it is the instance variables. Cash card has ID and value as its variables. An ID is of string type, thus one writes private string ID. A value is a real number, thus it is of double type. The variables are private. That means they can only be accessed by calling a method that to access them. After declaring the instance variables, then the next component is the constructor. A constructor is to initialize the values of the instance variables. It has a method name that has the same name as the class name. There is no return type uh, because the class itself defines a type. So the first line of the class is public the method name of the same as the class name, which is cash card, and it has taken two parameters. One is a string ID, which is going to be the ID of the cash card, and the other a double amount, which is the amount to be stored in the value in the cash card when it is newly created or issued. 
then the input parameters has to be assigned to the instance variables of the class that is the statement this ID equal to ID where this is a Java keyword which denotes the newly object that is being constructed then the input parameter amount is also used to initialize the instance variable value of the newly created cache car to indicate how much amount of money is being stored in the cache car. Once the class and the constructor are defined, an application program then can call the constructor method to create new objects which are depicted in the following statements cache car c1 equal to new cache car open parenthesis 1 and 10 and cache card c2 equal to new cache card open parenthesis 2 and 20 closing parenthesis Note that a class may have multiple constructors to cater for different ways of creating a new object. Here, instead of the original constructor that takes in two parameters, a new constructor is declared here with only one parameter. It takes in ID and assigns it to the ID variable of the instantiated object. Then it assigns the value of 10 to the value variable, which means there is a fixed $10 that is initialized with every new cash card. Once we have defined uh, the class with instance variables and the constructor methods, then the next one will be the accessor method. Here we show how get ID, set ID, get value methods can be implemented. Of course, we also can consider implementing setValue method. After the class with instance variables, the constructor and the accessor methods defined, there are other methods that can help to characterize the behaviors of the class. So here are two examples, topUp and deduct methods for the cache card class. The top up method takes in one parameter the amount to top up increase the value of the cash card. The deduct method takes in one parameter the amount to deduct decrease the value of the cash card. Once the methods are defined, then we can call the methods to enact the desired behavior or operation of an object. The format of the method is object.message open parenthesis, parameters, closing parenthesis. For instance, after calling the constructor, the constructor has a way of being called which is new cache car, for example. An object, my card, has been created. Then we can call the methods by the following ways. My car dot deduct open parenthesis 2.5 closing parenthesis my card dot top up open parenthesis 10 closing parenthesis system dot out dot print ln open parenthesis my card dot get values closing parenthesis Lastly, there is typically a toString method to a class. toString method returns a string that describes the class. So there is an example where the toString method returns a string that says the ID of the cache car is the content of the variable ID and the value is the content of the variable value. The reason why we have this toString method is of course to have a method to describe the class. So we can do system.out.println open parenthesis my car dot two string closing parenthesis. Of course with toString method we can also do the following system.out 
dot print ln open parenthesis my card closing parenthesis directly